Welcome back to our video series on proficiency scale development. This is the second video in our series. You probably recognize this quotation from part one, and I included it again because I hope it is a reminder for you about how you may learn information. Remember, it's so important for us to be able to learn, to relearn, and to maybe even unlearn some things that we have in the past. Keep that in mind today. At this point, you understand why scales are important to learning. And so in this segment, we're gonna look at how to create a proficiency scale. When you see the pause symbol on a slide, just like you see here, you'll know to stop the video to take time for work or discussion. Please be sure you have printed the resources provided with this presentation. For this segment, you need, you need a copy of this scale. You also need a copy of this template. You need a copy of this template. And the last thing you need is a plain sheet of scratch paper. Miranda spoke about the importance of learning goals earlier. To connect learning goals to scales, think of it like this. If learning goals provide a focus, then scales provide the path. To really illustrate this, let's consider a scale for the content that we're learning today. So please take a moment to read this scale. This is also one of your printed resources. Take some solo time to do what's expressed here on the scale for our learning today. So read each bulleted statement and decide which mark accurately describes your level of understanding and make that mark on your printed scale. Don't worry if you don't have many plus signs or check marks listed. That's the point right now. We're just learning and we're just beginning our learning. So we may not have understanding of certain statements just yet. Feel free to pause the video here if you need some time to work. Okay, take a look at those marks that you made. Look at your check marks, look at your plus signs, look at your uh, dashes, and I want you to consider what your overall understanding is at this point. So rate that overall understanding with a number. Go ahead and write that at the top, and then just put this aside for now. We don't need it just yet, but we will be coming back to it later on in the presentation. Okay, so you've seen a scale. And so now before we talk about a good working definition of a proficiency scale, I want you to have some experience with a proficiency scale. So if you would, imagine you are my students and I've just asked you to create a paper airplane because I wanna see what your level of proficiency with this skill is. So please take a moment to make a paper airplane with your scratch piece of paper. You can pause the video here if you, just, if you need some time to work. Okay, now take your paper airplane and trade it with someone near you. Trade it with a partner. I want you to really examine their plane. Take a look at how they folded it. Take a look at the, at the top and the bottom or the front and the back, but really examine what they did with their paper airplane. And I want you to consider what their level of proficiency with this skill is. So remember, the skill is building a paper airplane. So what is their level of proficiency? Consider it with these. Rate your partner's level of proficiency. Are they at a level two proficiency, a level three proficiency, or a level four proficiency? Okay. So I know you're probably really wanting to throw those paper airplanes across the room because after all, that's what they're for. It's the reason why we build paper airplanes is just to throw them. So go ahead and have some fun. Give those paper airplanes a launch. Here's one more example of a scale. Consider this scale for the skill of riding a bike. Here's the level three. Proficiency in riding a bike. Here's a level two proficiency in riding a bike, and level four, proficiency in riding a bike. 
And that's it. That's what a scale is, considering the skill and levels. I hope what you've gained so far is that a skill is all about levels of proficiency. It's about identifying what a standard looks like at target, what it looks like just below the target, and also what it looks like just above the target. When designing scales, remember you're really only considering three levels of proficiency with a skill or a standard. What would you say a proficiency scale is? Now that you've seen three examples, uh, now that you have really examined um, a product according to a scale, what would you say a proficiency scale is? Take a moment to work with your team on an answer to this question. Create a good definition. Feel free to pause the video here if you need some work time. I bet your answer looks a lot like this. It's a tool that displays a collection of related statements and target scores of learning for determining the current level of performance. So they take a learning standard and they break it down into levels of support needed to demonstrate proficiency. The information of a scale is organized, usually in a visual chart that can be used as a learning tool in the classroom. In fact, it should be used as a learning tool in the classroom. Skills are not intended to be used as a grading tool. They are not rubrics. Skills are meant to help a teacher and help a student identify skills to practice, identify where extra support is needed, and also identify areas where the student is ready for enrichment. This is why skills are so useful. They're really powerful because they allow educators to focus on what students can really do well, but also areas where students need to grow. Now we're ready to talk about the steps in creating a scale. Please find this printed resource and use it as a reference while we discuss these steps. The first thing you're gonna do when you look at a scale or you look at creating a scale is you're gonna consider the topic. And when I say topic, I mean, is this a scale about reading? Is this a scale about writing? Is it about problem solving? Um, is it about scientific properties? What's the general topic? And you're going to list that there. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to go right to the three. And the reason for that is because the language of the three is always the standard. In our case, these are going to be our teaks. That's what you list there, the language of the standard. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to think about a two and you're going to determine the language for the proficiency of two. And the way that you do that is you look at your three and you think about what prerequisite skills and what prerequisite knowledge do students need before they can do that three. And the last thing you're going to do is to take a look at the four and you're going to consider the language for the four by thinking about what extension and enrichment looks like. How does the three look above and beyond? Remember, you start with the three and you write the language of the standard. In our case, we're talking about teaks. Then you're going to consider the two by looking at the prerequisite skills and knowledge, maybe even the vocabulary that's needed. And the level four is all about the extension and enrichment. Let's practice. Let's practice writing a scale about this skill you see on the slide. Take a moment to make a scale on your printed resource. So in following our steps, remember to begin with the topic. Next, write your three, which is very simple because the level three is the standard. Next, write your two by thinking about what vocabulary or prerequisite skills are needed. Lastly, write your four which is considered enrichment or extension. Go ahead and pause the video if you need some more time. Does yours look like this? Spend some time talking with your team about the differences between your scale and what's listed here. Also discuss the similarities. What, are this, what, what appears to be the same in both examples? This is the template used for creating a scale, and this is what you'll use here in just a minute when writing a scale about your own content area. 
You're going to see just like the one we looked at before, there's a level two, a level three, and a level four. You will also notice the score point one and 1.5. Don't worry about that at this point. What you're really focusing on with a proficiency scale is what a two, what a three, and what a four looks like. You're also going to see the sample tasks listed as well. Don't worry about those at this point either. Christy's going to talk to you more in detail about that when she has segment three. At this point, you're ready to create scales about your own academic content. So please pause the video here for some work time with your team and to do what's expressed here on this slide. Remember, scales should be related to the learning goal, posted and be read by students, written in student-friendly language when appropriate, and also referenced during the lesson. Let's take a quick look at how scales can be posted. What you see in front of you is an example of a proficiency scale at a school here in our region. This is a scale about a sixth grade science teak. And you can notice that this teacher um, chooses to let students express where they are in their levels of proficiency by using their student ID number. That's what you can see written on those stickers, those little bitty numbers. Those are their individual confidential student ID numbers. So students can move themselves according to assessments, according to tasks that they do in the classroom. They can use those to assess where they are and then of course reflect that on the scale. What's really nice about what you see here and when students do move their stickers around, students become accountable for what they're learning and students become aware of what they need to do to get better. If a student is at a two, they can see exactly what they can do, but also what they need to get a little bit more into it. This is an example of a generic scale. This is posted at uh, one of our elementary schools here in the region. And it's generic because it has the 4321 with very simple statements. I need help. I need more practice. I can do this all by myself. I can show others how to do this. What's really nice about a generic skill like this is you can use it for anything you're doing. You can use it for any skill you're trying to teach students on a day-to-day -day basis. It could be uh, a standard, you know, one of our TEKS. Um, it could be um, something general like problem solving. One other way to really just display proficiency. And again, make students accountable for what they're learning. Okay, so let's go back and look at that scale for our learning. We took a look at this at the very beginning of our segment. Uh, you gave it the checks and the pluses and the dashes, and you also rated your overall understanding. I want you to think about it now. How would you rate your overall understanding at the end of this segment? I bet it's better, and I bet your self-rating score is higher. At least I hope it is. This brings us to the end of our second segment. In the next series, you will reflect on your work from this segment. Thanks so much.